Hey guys, VBad here with another V plays, and I know we already posted a video of Flight Night Friday with this aircraft, but I was still getting my feet under me with this really interesting and very unique aircraft, and honestly, historically significant. The flying wing concept was something Northrop worked on for the longest time, and eventually the culmination of all of his efforts was the B-2 Spirit Bomber. And while a lot of people might see some similarities here and might even insinuate that some of those concepts were actually stolen from this aircraft, uh, we may have learned some lessons learned from this airframe. However, the B-2 Spirit Bomber, or sorry, the flying wing designs Northrop was working on in order to get to the B-2 eventually, he had already created a bunch of flying prototypes back in the late 30s, so nothing was stolen. In fact, this concept of what you see are spoilers at the wingtips in order to control the yaw because there isn't a vertical stabilizer, that was something that Northrop had actually investigated as well. In actual reality, this aircraft would not have been stable because it wasn't until we had computer fly-by-wire controls that were able to balance that very sudden loss of yaw control. Like, you need those things to kick on very quickly in order to get them to prevent you from going into a flat spin. So without a computer control system, there's just no way this would have worked. What you're seeing here, the the ability to kill these aircraft so quickly is the result of 100% the patented slaughter three shot technique. And that's what I'm gonna call it. Slaughter said in one of my comments, he said, you know, three shots for you. The thing cools down really quick. Three shots keeps you from going completely overheated, and it allows you to get more consistent shots on target. Essentially, you're getting two ranging shots with a third shot that's most likely going to hit, or at the very least, if you are on target, you get three consecutive big hits. So as you can see, once we honed in on that 1056, we're able to wipe them out. So when they were talking about how this thing should be able to kill a bomber in a single pass, that's because you could potentially get four rounds out in one single run, and with two guns doing, what, like 200 damage apiece per hit, that's pretty significant. So it took a little bit longer than expected to be able to flip this zone, but we did have some interlopers in here. So we're going to continue to use this three-shot technique, and for those of you who have this aircraft or are trying to get this aircraft, just be aware that that's what I, has really changed this aircraft for me and that this is the first time implementing that technique and it is working out pretty good if I do say so myself. We have opted for a full speed build on this aircraft which means we have upgraded engine, we've got the, what is it, the turbines for uh, taking a little bit from the overall boost time but increasing the boost speed and we also have the polished airframe which is allowing us to get a little bit more speed in the dive because I was getting chased down by Yak-15s, oddly enough, and I just couldn't stand for that ridiculousness. I see a Focke Wolf 190. He is really high up, so I see that he's going to be an easy target for me. And there's the one, two, three shots, and got him. And you can just see how devastating it is when you get a good hit with those guns. Uh, every so often, some of those shots, you'll hear the sound of like a solid hit, but apparently you're hitting some part of the hitbox, which is causing critical damage to a wing or something like that, but it's not actually killing the aircraft or causing any good damage to the aircraft. So you are in the right, you're in the right ballpark, you just haven't quite hit where you needed to go. This is kind of cheating because one hit here is enough to be able to knock out that airframe for sure. There we go. Gotta love seeing that wing rip off of that VB-10. And now we're just trying to find another good target. Where's that sweet spot? There we go. And that's why you gotta fire in volleys, because it feels like there's just... Sometimes it's just not hitting the target right in the sweet spot that you're looking for. But there's two solid hits, enough to knock out one of those light fighters. Easy. That got us our Flying Warrior badge, and we're pretty much flipped the zone here. And these light fighters can't really handle a lot of fire from these big guns. So again, we take out the other light fighter, and we start looking for other targets to go after. And we see this Seafang Marmaduke. We're trying to get some rounds on target. 
usually it's really hard for me to get these shots to connect at these types of ranges so being able to fire in a three shot volley gives me a little bit more time and more opportunities to try and figure out the proper lead on that target we weren't able to get those locked in but we got a few good hits in on that Spitfire and we're just going to keep blowing through much like most of the boom and zoom tactics we've used in the past because again that's kind of how we got it set up with this speed build in fact that was the original intent the Horton brothers had for this airframe was for it to be a very fast aircraft I fully expected to die during this engagement and there's ooh, I think we just nicked him there's that Spitfire coming back for some revenge but I guess he got taken out by an ally and right now we're just using that speed to try and stay out of zones and to get a little bit of distance. They're pretty much gone. We're using the momentum we have in order to climb and you can see the aircraft just pretty much stays above 400 until we kick that nose up. But here comes the damage on this TU-2. There we go. Finished him off. Just got our grade 3. This B-47 is practically sitting still right now. And Akamatsu metal. Solid. Looking for another target. We're kind of protecting zones at this point. We're only a few points behind the enemy overall. But we are ahead on capture zones. So we will eventually catch up as long as we can maintain control. And at this point I'm really just interested in maintaining this setup. I don't want to get too many zones if we can if we can keep this status quo and I don't see the enemy really capturing anything right now then we can end up getting a lot more opportunity for point gain see there we just got grade 2 fighter and we are defending the contested area I see that P80 but realize that he's actually phasing away from me by hitting the alt button and then I kick my nose up to get an opportunistic hit on the BB-10 sure I stole that from a bot but it's a bot, so go ahead and steal those kills if you can. Locking in some shots on an IL-10, which is already fairly thin skin, but a kill is a kill. And even still, it is a ground attacker, so it does have very robust hit point pool. It's just less compared to an IL-8 or an IL-20 or something like that. We see on that P-47 yet again, up at higher altitude. We got good hits on him, but what we really are good at doing is tracking down and hunting heavy fighters at altitude. We ended up killing Ferdinand earlier on when we were going after that airfield. That locked us in Hero of the Sky badge. We're going to turn our nose back around. Again, we have a contested zone over here, so we're going to put some rounds in on this P-47. No? Maybe? Looks like Miles picked him off. There's a TU-2. There was some solid hits on the airframe. Pretty sure we did some critical damage there. I'm looking for enemy players since we are a squall line and there is the Spit 9. Looks like he's going for a head on. And even though it took a second for it to register, we did manage to get that aircraft with that last set of rounds that went out. That also got us the Flying Guardian badge. I see the IL-20 down here, figure that's a good target to go ahead and throw some rounds in on as we continue through the zone. The enemy unfortunately captured the center zone so we're behind on sectors, but we do have a good point lead at this point so I'm going to kick my nose up, I'm going to look for a more dangerous target which is going to be something like this Sea Fang. Trying to find that sweet spot. We got one good hit there out of the three. If we slow ourselves down to get inside of our optimum airspeed, we can really lock in the target and those two shells were enough to get us the winged legend medal. We're not really worried about capturing the zone anymore because we actually just grabbed the other airfield, so that's a good spot for us to be in. Coming in on this TU-2, which is a good target for this aircraft because it can knock out bombers fairly effectively with its speed and firepower. TU-2 is at pretty high health, but he does have a couple of bots chasing him. We took out his tail here and his wing. We're actually going to go up a little bit to slow us down while we're hitting the air brake in order to get our nose around that much quicker. 
you saw the nose kind of fell down as we were shooting there. So in order for us to get that gun right back on the enemy. Now there's only one aircraft left and if I was paying attention I would have saw him earlier but there's that IL-20 we put some shots in earlier and come on can we get him before the squall or sorry before the end of the match. Ooh, so close, so close. But we did get grade one on this as well and 17,000 personal points. Now, I warn you ahead of time, I record the results after... I record those first, so you're going to hear a little bit of hype in my voice as we go to the end results. So, hope you guys enjoyed the battle and we'll give it to you past V. Alright, so usually I record this part first. I kind of record, wait for a good match, and then I record kind of the energy of the excitement of the win. Oh my goodness. Uh, 17,000 personal points and an absolute myriad of medals. Four tickets for the day, that's cool. 337,000 credits and 13,000 XP being dumped into this pilot, giving me 37,000 thousand pilot point uh crap thirty seven thousand pilot experience we killed 19 aircraft if we would have gotten that il-20 and i would have paid more attention earlier instead of just being awestruck at getting the kill on the tu whew, we could have gotten an ace but i am not going to complain about not getting an ace when i when you got these like just how can you go wrong what a change in the way that this aircraft plays from something as simple as the three burst shot and i have all of it is owed to slaughter because he made that comment in my last video or the flight night friday video and i reviewed it today and i go you know what he's right it does cool down really quick if i hold down the trigger just for three shots if we go to four shots you kind of hit that like truly overheated and i feel like it takes a little bit longer to cool down after that but yeah yeah that is that is something isn't it that is a lot of firepower coming out of this thing and it's doing really well to stay on target it, it's almost like you need those first couple of shots just to kind of establish that proper lead you're like nope nope yes or nope yes yes or even if you can get all three to hit even better but getting one of the three volley to hit kind of gives you a better gauge of the lead you get more consistent results instead of just fire nope fire nope which is what i was doing before so yeah i think that that's going to be the answer for getting this plane to work and i'll tell you i it took me a while to get my feet under me in this, and I probably have oh, probably a 30 battles in this by now. I mean, I guess I could check real quick underneath profiles here, but the the fact of the matter is that the Horton 229 with two of what are essentially the hub guns that are on the Doe 335, you get that extra boost of damage, you get good range, you get better rate of fire, it ends up playing out to be a very strong platform and i for one am really enjoying the aircraft it has just turned out to be an absolute joy it's a great crew trainer and on top of that it's an even better experience grinder because i find it to be enjoyable if you have a premium aircraft a premium aircraft you enjoy is far better than a premium aircraft that like it wins all the time but maybe you don't necessarily like flying it because it feels like a slog this is turning out to be one of my more fun aircraft i've only played 11 battles in it <laughs> only played 11 battles in it um but it's going fantastic because over the course of those 11 battles we've managed to kill 85 enemy aircraft not too bad uh, the achievements in it, I mean, it's going pretty good right now. Of course, you can't see everything that comes along with this airframe, but uh, all the other medals we've achieved. But man, what a great, what a great little plane and a really neat looking one. I mean, of course, it's got this really neat bat logo on here. Go figure. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I wish you all the best of luck on the grind for this aircraft. I feel as though it's just going to be par for the course with all the other grinds we've seen for a tier 8 premium aircraft. For those of you that are looking for a tier 8 premium aircraft, one that this might kind of 
what is it, tip your fancy? That's probably not the right word. If this is something that catches your eye as something that you think that you'd really want as a tier eight premium, being aware that it does have its quirks and it's gonna take time to get used to, if you do a majority of the missions and you were going to buy a tier eight premium, this is one of the ways that you can get it essentially at a discount. Do the legwork, do the one, do those missions that just require any number of battles, destroy X number of ground targets or air targets or capture X number of zones. If you can get the medals, but if you can't, then you can just buy those tickets, do the math and figure out how many tickets you need to actually purchase or whatever those are, the certificates, that's what they're called. And then you can essentially get a tier eight not at $54, you can get it at a reasonable price that is going to make it a little bit more worth it. And I for one can say that I I have enjoyed this airframe a lot and I do think it's a much better method than paying like $54 outright for a tier eight premium, $54 US anyways. Whew. Anyways, still, still running hot, that was a great battle. Hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed playing that match. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.